There is an incident that happened with Al Qasim ibn Muhammad, Rahimahullah, who is from the Tabi'een. So he says that he went out one day and he passed by Aisha radiallahu anha and he found her praying. It was like the duha time. And so he said to himself that because she was taking a long time, he said, let me go to the marketplace, do my business, and then come back. And then by that time she would have finished her salah. So he went to the marketplace, basically spent the day, came back, and she was still in the same rak'ah, reciting the same verse again and again and again. وَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ قَالُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا قَبْلُ فِي أَهْلِنَا مُشْفِقِينَ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَوَقَانَا عَذَابَ السَّمُومِ إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلُ نَدْعُوهُ and she kept reciting this again and again and again and she was crying. The brothers and sisters, these verses, they're speaking about the people of Jannah. And Aisha radiallahu anha, in her hope to be amongst the people of Jannah, she placed herself in the footsteps of the people of Jannah. And of course, we know that she's from the people of Jannah. And she put the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the people of Jannah would say. The verses meaning that when the people of Jannah will enter Jannah, they'll meet with each other. And they'll discuss in their happiness. And they will say to one another, Inna kunna qablu fi ahlina mushfiqeen. That before time, before, we used to live in fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was gracious upon us and protected us and saved us from the poisonous punishment that we used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during our lives. These are the words of the people of Jannah. And so right from the beginning, tonight inshallah ta'ala, we're going to speak about conversations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that the people of Jannah will say and have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us conversations and statements from the people of hellfire. So lesson number one, right from the beginning, is that I want you to put yourself into the footsteps of the person who's going to say this. And so these conversations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, it's mentioned again and again and again. This statement will happen. And so we have to either um, hope for it or protect ourselves from that. One of the lessons that we'll be learning, inshallah ta'ala, is about the angels. Every time someone comes into hellfire, the angels say to them, didn't a warner come to you? And I thought to myself that the, angel, the angels will keep saying it, and we know what the angels are going to say. I said, how many people are going to be entered into hellfire? And yet every group that comes, the angels will say the same thing to them. Didn't a warner come to you? And I thought to myself, how stupid the person who goes to hellfire must be. It's like the angels are saying to them, you're so dumb. How many times was this told to you? Didn't someone tell you it, there would be a hellfire? Didn't somebody tell you? And yet, why are we still disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how many chances do we get? And yet the people still disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here tonight, inshallah ta'ala, it's like there's no excuse after this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us about the people who enter Jannah. There was a person who was called his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people, they killed this person. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions him in Surah Yaseen. Qila dhul al-Jannah. And then he says in response, Qala ya layta qawmi ya'lamun. He says in response, oh, I wish my people knew بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ When he's entered into Jannah, he says, I wish my people would know. I wish I could tell them 
the subsequent generations that would come up, the men and the women, if only I could tell my people how amazing it is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives a person. How amazing it is when a person is so noble and is placed in such a high and lofty status. If only my people would know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his words and put it in Surah Yasin. Put it in the Quran so that we would know the statements of the people of Jannah and the statements of the people of Hellfire. And so to begin inshallah ta'ala with the first category and that is with the Malaika. They are a part of the human being's life from the beginning to the end. There's no part of your life except that the angels are part of it. From the moment your soul was breathed into the embryo, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to breathe the soul. And throughout your life you had an angel on your right, an angel on your left, and they're writing down your good deed right now, inshallah ta'ala. And when a person does bad, the angel's still writing it down, doing tawbah. The angels are consistently a part of the human being's life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us Conversations that the angels, when the person dies, that's when you begin to speak directly with the angels. And so the first of these verses is the angels dragging the people of hellfire to hellfire. Now, there's verses that speak about how they're being dragged and, and the horror of that day, and we're not really getting into that. That's another topic as well, but we're focusing instead on what are the angels saying to them. And so in this verse, this is in Surah Al-Mulk, verse 8, 9, and 10, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the fire, the hellfire, is almost bursting with its fury. Hellfire has a scream to it that you could die from the sound. It's almost bursting in its fury. And then the angels of hellfire, right? You're talking about the gatekeepers of hellfire. They say to the people... Uh, كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا Every time a group of the people of hellfire come, another group is coming, it's like the angels are like smacking them and saying to them, didn't a warner come to you? أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ And I thought to myself that there's so many verses in the Qur'an that bring up this point. That didn't a warner come to you? Didn't someone remind you? Didn't someone come to you? Again and again and again. And then they respond, قَالُوا bala. Yes, someone did come. Now it's, it's and, and like I said, it's almost like every time you see someone that was so stupid and so foolish and so dumb, and so their response is, قَالُوا bala قَدْ جَاءَنَا nadir. Even let's say for you, someone will say, we didn't know that we had to do this. How is that? Some people, they live in a Muslim country, and they'll say, we never knew we had to pray five times a day. How is that possible? That you never heard that. The thing is that, yes, it was heard. But it never entered the heart. Didn't a warner come to you? And something as um, simple as Jum'ah prayer. Every Jum'ah prayer, the people are getting the message. Establish your salah, pay the zakah, fast in Ramadan, go for hajj. All these statements are being said again and again and again. Didn't a warner come to you? They say, bala. The warner did come. But this is the situation. Because so many times people hear a khutbah and hear the message, yet they don't follow it. Yes, we did hear the message. And someone did tell us, but we called them a liar. وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reveal anything. There's no message. It's all coincidence. I'm in doubt. I don't know. Is this really the truth or not? This is their excuse. So let me just continue living my life of disobedience to Allah subhanahu and every time a group comes to hellfire, they're going to get the same question. Didn't a warner come to you? Didn't somebody tell you? Just imagine the thing that you're doing haram or I'm doing haram. And ask yourself, didn't somebody tell you that this was haram? Now, on the opposite side, the angels, because the angels, just like they'll be dragging people to hellfire, they will be escorting Ahlul Jannah, the people of Jannah, to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us part of that entourage. And it's an entourage that's being guided and taken, you know, escorted by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a punishment and a reward in of itself. The gatekeepers of hellfire look different than the, than the gatekeepers of paradise. This is in Surah Al-Ra'd, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Garden of Eden, Jannatu Adn, 
Jannatu Adni Yadhulunaha. That the Garden of Eden, the everlasting garden. And in this dunya, every time you see a beautiful garden, you can't live in the garden. Right? If you live in the garden, there's snakes, there's worms, there's bugs, you can't lie down anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jannatu Adn. That the Adn is the, the garden that you're going to be living in this beauty. In Jannah, you will be fully immersed in all those elements. With the rivers flowing from underneath. Yadhulunaha, they will enter it. And a lot of times people think of entering Jannah by themselves. But it's not by yourselves. Inshallah ta'ala, you're going to be entering with your wives, with your children, with your family members. Women salaha, those who are righteous from their parents and their, and their spouses and their children. And the angels shall enter on them from every gate. These are the gatekeepers of Jannah. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you. This statement of salam, you'll actually see that everywhere in Jannah, and it comes up in different categories. Ahl al-Jannah with Ahl al-Jannah, with each other, they're saying, Illa qilan salam and salama. Amongst themselves, they're saying, We're in peace. And the other person is saying in back, we're in peace. And peace. Everywhere in Jannah is peace and serenity. And the angels in Jannah, when the people of Jannah enter, this is the statement. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Because of your patience in the dunya, because of your sabr, that there's peace upon you now. And what an amazing, what a beautiful, everlasting abode. That this is your home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, there are actually um, verses where the people of hellfire, they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the people of hellfire lose hope in calling upon Allah, because Allah is not answering them. They forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya, they didn't call upon Allah in the dunya, and so in the hereafter, they're trying to call to Allah, but Allah is not answering them. They're trying everything possible to get out. What can we do to get out? Who can we go to? Who can we speak to? So they call upon Allah when they lose hope of that, but then they start calling the gatekeepers of hellfire. And now if there is ever of the most toughest, most angriest, most meanest of the creation of Allah, it is the gatekeepers of hellfire. And they're trying to seek mercy from them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the people in hellfire are saying to the gatekeepers of hellfire. These are the ones that Allah instructed to maintain forever hellfire. And they're calling them, like they're trying to get some mercy from them. They say to them, you make dua to Allah. Make dua to your Lord. They've lost hope in making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're telling the angel, listen, angel, you make dua. To whom? They don't even say, Ud'u Rabbana. They lost hope even in calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their Lord. They said, Ud'u Rabbakum. Make dua to your Lord. For what? What do you, what do you think they're asking for? In fact, they asked Allah, their dua earlier was, to destroy us. But unfortunately, that would be mercy. So they've lost hope of even asking for this. So they say, call your Lord to lighten the punishment. We just want one day break. It's not even a break. Just the intensity turned down for one day. That's all we're asking for. And so the angels say back to them. And this is even, you'll see in the tafsir, like, when do the angels respond to them? After thousands and thousands of years, they actually get a response. Nobody's answering. There's nobody, like, standing there that they're talking to. And so when the angels finally speak to them, it's again, they said, to this, or they said this to them already. Didn't the messenger come to you? Didn't somebody tell you this was haram? Didn't the messengers come to you with the clear signs? You clearly knew that there was a hellfire. You clearly knew what you had to do. Didn't the messengers come? What can they say in response? 
There is no answer except yes. Then the, the angels say in the response, they say, then make dua. Make dua as much as you want. Make dua as much as you want it makes no difference because the dua of the kafir is nothing but astray and it's just gone. It means nothing. And the punishment continues. In the verses, they call out, وَنَادَوْ يَا Malik. Malik is the, the chief of the gatekeepers of hellfire. They say, may your Lord destroy us and finish us off. And Malik says to them in response, no, you're going to stay. You're going to continue. And it continues. Where Malik says to them, you're going to stay, that the haq was brought to you. You got it. The books came to you, the messengers came to you, the reminders came to you. Allah put an internal GPS, your heart, your qalb, that told you that when you were doing something right or when you're doing something wrong, it told you that this was wrong. It kept telling you this was wrong, this was wrong. فَكَذَّبْتُمْ And so you disbelieved, you just shut it off. You're trying to shut it off, but you couldn't do it. Everything, subhanAllah, will be refused to them. Everything refused. Whether they ask to be obliviated, whether they ask to you know, come out of hellfire, if they ask, and this is more the conversations that they're calling upon Allah, and this is, subhanAllah, you'll see that this is the beginning of their standard. When they first go to hellfire, and they see hellfire, they're asking Allah to send them back to the dunya. And what a joke that is. That they're saying, oh, now that we've seen hellfire, give us another chance. And that's earlier they were asking for that. They lost hope of ever going back to the dunya. They lost hope of calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They lost hope of being just obliviated so that there's nothing left. And they've lost hope of even the punishment of hellfire being lightened for even a part of a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Az-Zumar, that the people of hellfire will be dragged to, um, to hellfire in groups until they come to it and the, the, the gates of hellfire are open. What happens is that when they come to the hellfire, they're being dragged and they can hear it and all that, then the doors open and they fall into hellfire. And then the khazana, the gatekeepers of hellfire say to them, didn't messengers come to you before? Right? Didn't they mention the verses? Didn't they remind you of this day? And the people will say yes. And so in the other verse after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in groups, they're going to be escorted to Jannah till they arrive at Jannah. And so the gates of Jannah, they open slowly. And as the people come closer to Jannah, Jannah actually comes closer to the people. And the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believers, the gates open up, slowly, slowly, slowly intensifying the love and the desire for the people of Jannah to enter Jannah. And Jannah is alive. As you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Jannah and speaking to hellfire. Jannah loves the believers. And so just like the believers love to enter Jannah, Jannah loves for the believers to enter it. And there's a beautiful hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said about the fragrance of Jannah and verily that the fragrance of Jannah can be smelt from a distance of 500 years. Now if you're 500 years away from Jannah and you can still smell Jannah, then what about when you're right in front of the doors of Jannah? What will the angels say to the people when they enter Jannah? Salamun alaykum. It's everywhere. This is the statement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your ears hear that statement. That peace be upon you. Peace in everything that the word peace means. And then the angels say to them, Tibtum. It's translated, I have one in the translation, it says, You have become pure. You've become pure, so enter it and you will enter it forever. Enter into Jannah forever and ever. For all of eternity. And so the people of Jannah, this is actually their statement 
that all praise is to Allah, all thanks is to Allah, Alhamdulillah. And so you will see this statement recurring again and again and again in the Qur'an. This is the statement of the people of Jannah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We made it. Didn't Allah promise you? Didn't the messengers come to you? Yeah, they came and we believed in them. And that's what you'll see in the statements that they say to each other. They're like, Alhamdulillah, when they're talking with each other, that the messengers came and Alhamdulillah, we believe them. And what an excellent reward for those who work righteousness. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Some, a caller will call when the people of Jannah enter Jannah, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, O people of Jannah, that you're going to be healthy for all eternity. And you will never become sick. And then the, the statement is, you know, like, Oh people of Jannah, guess what? And you're going to be alive forever, you'll never die. Third thing, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, that you're going to be youthful and you're never going to grow old. And the fourth thing, you're going to enjoy Jannah forever. There will never come a time where you become bored with Jannah. Because in this dunya, we can't comprehend that. No matter what a person gets in the dunya, you can only have so much of the things in the dunya. But this isn't Jannah. And this is the way it is. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We made it. This next category is the people of Jannah speaking with their family members. And the people of Hellfire speaking with their family members, of course there are verses where people of Jannah are entered into Jannah with their family members. Such as the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, enter into paradise you and your wives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the verses speaks about when the person gets the book with their right hand. They want their family members and they want like their mother and their family members to find out about the book. And the person who gets the book in their left hand, they don't want anybody to know. So in fact, I actually didn't find any verses of the people of Hellfire speaking with their family members. They're on their own. If you get your book in your right hand, and imagine that, this is the book that has all your deeds. Just by virtue of you getting it in your right hand, you know you've passed. And if you get it in your left hand, you know you failed. You don't even have to look into it. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, as for the person who is given the book, you're given it, it's not that you take it, you, you're given it. Biyamini with his right hands, فَيَقُولُ هَاؤُمُ قُرَأُوا كِتَابِيَ It's like, whoa! When you pass your exam, what do you do when you go home to your mom? Mom, I passed my exam! And what if you went to hellfire after that? Who cares about that? Nothing in this dunya matters unless your intentions are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who cares about these exams in the dunya if a person fails the exam in the hereafter? Subhanallah, in, in Surah Al-Fajr where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of hellfire, this is what they say to themselves. If only I'd prepared for my life. And all these exams that we talk about, these exams in the dunya, we think that it's preparing for our life. It's preparing specifically for our dunya and the material side of our dunya. As for preparation of our life, that is in praying Fajr, and praying Dhuha, and praying Asr, and praying Maghrib, and praying Isha, and doing that till the day you die sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your belief in Allah, your zakah, your siyam, your hajj. That is preparing for your life. And so how many mothers and fathers would keep their children asleep because they have an exam coming up later in the day? They don't want to wake them up for salah because the dunya exam is coming up. How many mother and fathers will forbid their children from fasting because of these exams of the dunya? I'm trying to think of some other reason they would forbid them from fasting, but it's actually, it's all related to academics. It's all preparing for materialistic dunya. We return back to that person. It's like you want to show everybody. You know when someone doesn't want you to see their marks, 
It's because they failed. إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَةٍ I knew that I would be meeting this hisab one day. I knew that this would happen. Because there was a halaqa one day where we were reading the verses of the Qur'an and I remember in the dunya reading this verse in the Qur'an and it brings me so much joy today to be able to say this. To be able to share with your mother and your father and all your family members, ha umuqra'u kitabiyah. Read it. <laughs> Look at it. Open book. Inni dhanantu anni mulaqin hisabiyah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ are you pleased, O oh people of Jannah? We are pleased. Are you pleased? Do you want anything? No, we got everything. SubhanAllah, even I, I thought to myself, if the people of Jannah just got to imagine what they would want in Jannah, you couldn't even imagine a Jannah that you would want to live in. Usually human beings, they can't even envision something that great. And so the Prophet ﷺ said about Jannah, in paradise is that which the eye has never seen and the ear has never heard. That no soul has ever envisioned or imagined something like that. A blessing so amazing like that. Ha umuqra'u kitabiyah. And as for the people of hellfire, I couldn't find any verses, inshallah ta'ala. You can look and see if you find any verses of people of hellfire speaking with family members that I couldn't find any in the Quran. I did find conversations. And these you can find in the Quran with people of Jannah speaking with family members in the dunya. And if examples of that was Nuh alayhi salam with his son. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Nuh said to his son, Oh my son, get on the boat with us and don't be with the disbelievers. And his son responded back. His son was a disbeliever and he said, I will go to the mountains and the mountains will save me from the water. And subhanAllah, it's interesting. It's almost as if his son was a scientist. So he's like saying, mountains never get drowned, or these mountains that we have, the water level never reaches that high. So I don't want to go with my father and be with the believers who are very few and everybody mocks them and so on. And no, I'm not going to go with the disbelievers, so let me find a middle path. Somewhere in between Islam and Kufr. It's called hypocrisy. And so he, went, he said, I'll go to the mountain. And Nuh salam said, there's no protection from the affair and the decree of Allah except those whom He has mercy upon. And then a wave came between them and Nuh salam's son was drowned. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh that he wasn't one of your children. He wasn't your son. Because of his deeds that were not righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us about Ibrahim salam and his father Aza. Oh my father, don't worship the devil. Ibrahim salam's father said to him in response, this is his own father, he said to him, are you preferring something other than our idols? If you don't stop this, if you don't stop calling to this way, you don't start worshipping this God, and get away from me. Ibrahim salam said, salamu alaykum. The next category after this, is the category of the people of Jannah speaking with the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire speaking with the people of Hellfire. Before I go to this category, I want to remind you of the love of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum for Jannah and how these verses and these statements, it was always part of their lives. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is on the day of Badr. After the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his speech on, and before the battle of Badr, he said to the companions radiallahu anhum, this is now, the battle is about to begin. Qumu, he said, stand up for a Jannah, a paradise whose expanse is the heavens and the earth. So one of the companions, his name was Umair, he said, Bakhin Bakh. He's like, it's, we would say in our language, we would say like, dang. Mm. So the Prophet sallallahu said to Umair, he said, he said, what made you make that statement? And Umair he said, it's nothing, Ya Rasulullah, except that I'm hoping and aspiring to be amongst those who enter into that Jannah. That's why I'm saying it. I just want to be one of them. And then the Prophet ﷺ responded to him that you're one of those people who are going to go to Jannah. Now, Umair, عنه, at this point, now if you heard that you're going to Jannah, and Umair, Radiallahu anhu, he had dates in his hands. Umair was eating dates. 
And he's like, this is taking too long. And so he threw the dates on the ground. And he'd entered into the battlefield. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 